get a thrill by watching drivers take seemingly death-defying chances. But now it seems it's the fans who are risking death by going to these events. Tony Cox has the story. If you want to know what monster trucks are all about, just listen to their names. Liquidator. Wrecker. Above and beyond. They smash cars. I want to see go to pieces. These high-powered, overgrown toys delight children and adults year-round. The fun comes from watching tons of souped-up steel and rubber defy gravity in their attempts to sail over monster piles of junk cars. Many races are over in just a few seconds, but whether the race is against the clock or two-by-two, two, as far as the fans are concerned, the wilder, the better. We don't want them to t turn their cars, their trucks over. If they do, that's an added attraction for the fans. Most people want to see a crash. I mean, yeah, when they tip over, it's exciting, big time. But not when it goes into the crowd. On March 7th, Chip Slattery was part of the crowd which came to the Niagara Falls Convention Center to see a monster truck race. He remembers thinking, even before the race began, that the action was just too close for comfort. When I was in my seat, I was up high enough that I didn't feel at risk. But when I was standing right where I was allowed to stand, I was real scared. It was, it was too much. They're massive. They're intimidating. As it turned out, one truck was far more than intimidating. It was deadly. Chip had his video camera with him that night, and this is what he and the horrified crowd witnessed. <laughs> Steve Pulowski and his 10-year-old son, Jason, were also in the stands that night, near where the truck hit. I looked over, and I saw the truck push three or four other people out of the way, and I did, I did all I could to keep Jason from looking over and seeing what was going on. This is what he would have seen. Steve blindly snapped this shot as he and Jason were desperately racing out of harm's way. The man is Lester Gilliam, who had just plucked a young child from certain death by the oncoming runaway truck. Moments later, the 82-year-old man was dead, run down by a monster truck. Miraculously, Gilliam was the only fatality, and there was only a handful of injuries, none of them serious. Months later, Jason still has nightmares about it. I keep on seeing it coming up and then I get a scare and wake up. Monster truck racing is a relatively new sport and isn't regulated by a sanctioning body. For now, only insurance companies seem to have the clout to impose safety standards and then only on a client-by-client -client basis. For years, the Monster Truck Racing Association, or MTRA, has been aggressively promoting safety in the sport. But membership by drivers and promoters is strictly voluntary, and the MTRA has no enforcement power. We do our best to try and educate and have these people belong to our organization, uh, but you can only do so much. George Carpenter says this was the first spectator fatality he's aware of out of thousands and thousands of monster truck races. And from what he knew of the event, all recommended safety precautions have been taken, right down to the presence of a switch that a person on the sidelines can press to cut off the ignition. In this case, the truck reportedly went wild after the driver was knocked unconscious, possibly when the truck hit the ground. What's not clear is why the person holding the kill switch didn't push the button, or if the system was working in the first place. In his position, Carpenter is careful not to point fingers, but he does acknowledge what Chip Slattery suspected. I think that the, the situation there uh, with the way the racing was set up and the size of the building was one that maybe full-blown racing shouldn't have been done in. They were all sitting ducks. Absolutely. That's amazing more people didn't get killed, really. If the Niagara Falls tragedy had been the first and last spectator death, that might be the end of this story and this issue. But three months later to the day, tragedy struck again. This time, the victim was a six-year-old boy named Todd Abbott. It happened at an outdoor speedway in Galesburg, Michigan. It was my assumption when I went out there that all those trucks had remote kill switches. Lynn's assumption was wrong. 
Coincidentally, the driver at Galesburg lost control when, like the driver at Niagara Falls, he was not unconscious. Reportedly, the driver passed out after landing off his last set of cars. Suddenly, the truck veered radically, hit a parked car, and was launched toward the bleachers. Todd was standing in the aisle, hoping to get an autograph from his favorite driver. His father was taking pictures nearby. And he busted through the fence. I went to look for my kids. And I, they were lifting the truck off from Todd, and I found him there. Reportedly, the truck was equipped with a kill switch, but it wasn't required in order to race that night, and the driver chose not to use it. Would it have made the difference between life and death for Todd Abbott? We'll never know for sure, but one person no, doesn't think so. He's stop. the race he, promoter he, and Speedway he, 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 owner, hard. Russ Calvin. I'm not sure if I want to be the guy holding the switch either. Uh, what happens if that driver is 10 seconds from regaining control? He knows how to manipulate his truck, and a promoter who's never been in a monster truck before pushes the button and takes him out of the picture, and the truck still goes awry. George Carpenter was not at Galesburg that day, but based on what's been reported to him, he sees things differently. The problem was is that the ignition interrupter system was designed specifically in, to be used in the case of a driver being rendered unconscious for any reason. That's exactly what happened to that driver. There was no ignition interrupter system. That truck was left to run wide open with no way of stopping it. Harold Tuttle was among the 13 people injured that night. Though little Todd was the only fatality, Harold knows that there but for the grace of God, it could have been him. Seeing the kid get killed and all the people get hurt, it was sort of scary. It, was, it wasn't sort of, it was scary. That kid didn't deserve to die. Last month, another monster truck event was held at Galesburg Speedway. This time, it was held under the watchful eyes of the Monster Truck Racing Association. This time, kill switches were required. And the Monster Truck Racing Association says since the Galesburg crash, sales of kill switches have increased dramatically.